I get comments from people all the time who say things like, I would love to buy a folding phone, but there are two big things that really get in the way of me doing that. The number one thing is obviously just the price. They're very expensive. But number two is the fragility of that inner screen. Even though things have gotten a little bit better over time with improvements to ultra thin glass, improvements to the hinges, it is still a relatively fragile thing. And if it breaks, it might be pretty expensive to get it fixed, get third party insurance. I've said it before. I'll say it until those cows come home. Get third party insurance. Samsung knows as well as anybody that this is something that needs to continue to improve, and it seems as though they may be focusing on that to some degree with the Galaxy Z Fold 7. Earlier today, there was a tweet from Panda Flash Pro where they actually quote tweeted themselves. Back on the 28th of February, they said, Z Fold 7 will be the toughest foldable smartphone on the market due to its new durable internal structure, new hinge, and all new hinge dust protective brushes that kind of scrambled my brain a little bit. Basically, a new hinge and new brushes in the hinge to keep things from getting into your phone and potentially behind your screen, which can cause failures. They quote tweeted themselves and they said, confirmed. Flexible glass also will now change 100%. So they're changing the flexible glass that they are being used. I don't know if it means that they're 100% going to change it or they're going to change it 100%. Hard to say. But Samsung is set to utilize the latest generation of foldable displays flex glass in the upcoming Galaxy Z Fold 7. I would take that to mean they're basically using a new generation of their ultra thin glass. Well, what does that mean? Typically, with improved generations of ultra-thin glass, you get improved durability, whether that is from shock or it's from repeated folding. You probably get a reduction in the visibility of that crease as it has better ability to kind of bounce back from that persistent folding. And in the past, it's also meant that it's gotten thinner. They've maybe removed layers from it that they don't need anymore or something like that. It's gotten thinner. It's all good stuff. These are all very, very positive things. What about that hinge though, right? We've also seen other OEMs in the past adopt something called a water drop style or teardrop style hinge mechanism. When these devices fold, you have to think about the fact that the screen here in the middle, when this thing is folding, it's not folding completely flat like you're folding over a piece of paper. You have sort of a rounded area at the end of it, and in fact, he has an image here that does a really good job of showing this. It's not completely creased. These other OEMs, when they use the water drop style, what we're talking about here is take that sort of curved area and increase the radius of it, make it bigger so that it's not creasing it quite as tight as it was before. Maybe it's like this, and it used to be like this. This actually does make a really big difference. Now, Samsung has been reluctant to adopt a larger radius uh, bend or crease in their devices, presumably because it makes it harder to do waterproofing and dust proofing. Maybe that's what the new brushes he's referencing, maybe that's what those are about. Maybe they have found a way to kind of marry the best of both worlds. So better UTG, better hinge, better brushes to keep stuff out, this could result in a Z Fold 7 with a much reduced crease. And that kind of brings us to part two of this article here on ShaneCraig.tech, but also of this video. This is coming from a post from Phone Arena. Now, there's a thing called Mobile World Congress going on right now where people show up all kinds of crazy phone stuff, and Samsung is there, and they have this demo set up. This is a couple of folding devices, and look, they're not saying this is the screen that's going to be on the Z Fold 7. They're just kind of showing, hey, here's an improvement to what we've done or over what we've done in the past. Here's image one and here's image two, which I think is a lot better of an image. You can see over here, that crease is very visible. That looks basically identical to what we're used to on the Z Fold 6. But if you look at this device here, that does not have a very visible crease at all. You can see a little bit of a ripple there, but it is very, very hard to see. And what's impressive about this to me is that it appears as though this demo is not behind glass. This looks like something you could walk up and pick up 
and mess around with, like you guys might have seen in my recent unboxing of the Oppo Find N5 before it's ever been creased the first time, folded the first time, the crease looks incredible. After it's been folded a few times, the crease does start to become more visible. Now, don't get me wrong, this thing's crease still absolutely murders everybody else North America-wise, like the Pixel and the Z Fold. It's even better than the OnePlus Open. It's fantastic. But my point is, you keep folding it, it does get worse. It hits a certain plateau where it doesn't really get any worse than that. But this might already be broken in, and if that's the case, that is extraordinarily impressive. So if we kind of combine everything we think we know about the Galaxy Z Fold 7, right? So we have the bigger screens, probably an 8-inch inner screen. We have a thinner 4.5 millimeter thick body. We have a 200 megapixel primary camera, a larger vapor chamber, so it's going to be able to keep itself a little bit cooler than before. The S Pen almost certainly sticking around despite the fact that the S Pen digitizer appears to be gone. Also, these rumors of an improved hinge, improved ultra-thin glass, and a much reduced crease. I think this might be the Z Fold device we have been asking for for a really long time. Also notice that that device is as thick as a normal phone, as wide as the normal phone is what I should say. That means your cover display is not going to feel weirdly narrow. It's going to be right there with the other foldables in the world with a normal phone-sized cover display. All of this to me points in very, very good directions. But as usual, I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Be sure to check out the written article linked down below as well. You can see some of the images and all the sources for the information in today's video. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.